We're now going to talk about absolute plots and relative plots, and these are categories of plots of land. Now, you may recall that we talked about verbalized plots in the uh, demonstrator or in some of the earlier videos. And this is where these concepts are start to uh, be unpicked. So registrable plots of land fall into two categories. There's absolute plots, so those are plots of land where the spatial element is represented using geometry. And then you have relative plots, which are those plots of land where the spatial element is represented using a grounded verbalization. And the phrase grounded verbalization is important. And this is the kind of stuff that goes through in the Tenement Scotland Act 2004. So you're using provisions uh, that are illegally enshrined. Now, again, this is specific to the jurisdiction of Scotland, but there are similar elements in other areas of the world. The point being, is that both approaches provide a legally unambiguous representation of space that can be interpreted by a reasonable actor. And this is the whole point of registration, is to provide credible, legally unambiguous representations. So absolute plots. An absolute plot must accurately represent the spatial extent of a plot of land using geometry. So if we get back to our discussions about the 2D and the 3D nature of the concepts we've got, um, we need to start to understand how we're going to resolve that geometry problem. So for principal land, say Solum, Freehold, um, we could use a 2D polygon as a representation, sorry, a proxy representation for a 3D volume that would work pretty well for conventional separate tenements uh, you could use a 3d volumetric representation or you could have a mixed representation acting as a proxy for a 3d volume with a 2d polygon providing the horizontal location and a verbalization providing the vertical or any horizontal nuance now this could be first floor it could be an address it could be a description when registered, each absolute plot becomes a cadastral unit with a spatial extent and is given a unique cadastral unit number. Relative plots. Conversely, relative plots must ask, accurately represent the spatial extent of a plot of land using a grounded verbalization. Now, the spatial extent is inferred from the verbalization using rules of the interpretation of a, a reasonable actor. And again, it's that element of a reasonable actor that kind of grounds it within a legal context. Rules are a useful way of translating verbalizations into to legally unambiguous 3D space. And that's why, for example, in Scotland, they have the Tenement Scotland Act uh, to describe the, the rules for converting relative plots for tenements. The combination of a verbalization grounded with an accurately mappable cadastral unit, and it's this accurately mappable cadastral unit which is providing the grounding, provides a legally unambiguous representation of the spatial extent of a plot of land. So there's common approaches to verbalization. So there's a legally credible cross-reference to an independently grounded concept. So for example, a formalized address referencing system. So in the UK, a UPRN would suffice. Or a legally unambiguous verbal description of a location grounded in an absolute plot. So, for example, the northernmost uh, second floor flat in cadastral unit XXYYZZ. Um, in many respects, given that UPRNs can change, the second is generally perceived as the most unambiguous. Uh, and uh, so tying a UPRN into the, uh, a grounded absolute plot, I think, gives you the belt and braces for long term uh, um, representation. Relative plots come with a number of caveats as follows. Only conventional separate tenement ownership rights can be represented as a relative plot. You know, so through avoidance of doubt, you can't do principal land as a relative plot. Stop it. Every relative plot must be spatially grounded in an absolute plot, as defined in the uh, two per deed separation. Every relative plot must have an associated verbalization, which allows the unambiguous identification of the spatial extent of the plot of land. 
When registered, every relative plot becomes a cadastral unit is given a unique cadastral unit number. It is spatially grounded in a different cadastral unit by cross-referencing to either the deed which created the relative plot by a tuple operation or the version of the absolute plot which is the parent cadastral unit of relative plot. So the choice very much depends on whether the deeds are registered or not. Absolute and relative plots uh, describe plots of land which when become registered, sorry, which when registered become cadastral units. So the set of cadastral units represents all the registered plots of land. The spatial representation of a set of cadastral units is the cadastral map.